Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and hands-on software architect, also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 84, uh, we'll still look at some of these architectural characteristics by defining what is meant by deployability. When we talk about deployability as an architectural characteristic, it's really defined as three things. It's first of all the ceremony, in other words, the ease of deployment. How easy is it to deploy your software into production? It's also about the frequency of deployment. And finally, about the overall risk of deployment. As a matter of fact, if we take a look at three or four, actually, different architecture styles, a couple of monoliths and over to distributed architecture, we have the layered architecture, um, modular monolith, service-based, and finally going to microservices. If we look at the various characteristics of deployability between all of those, we see kind of an interesting curve. And as a matter of fact, let's talk about this curve. It starts really with the layered architecture. <clears throat> layered architectures really don't lend themselves towards high, or I should say, yeah, layered architectures, towards high degrees of deployability. Um, <clears throat> first of all, when we talk about the ceremony involved with these, um, Oh boy, we have things like mock releases, we have code freezes, it's the coordination of multiple teams that really um, causes a lot of stress with the layered architecture. We may have a presentation team managing the presentation layer, a backend team managing the business layer, a database team managing the database, so on and so forth. And so um, the ceremony is uh, quite a bit. Also, the deployment risk is high in a layered architecture. When we ever deploy, we deploy 100% of the functionality. And consequently, um, is there a chance of breaking something? Of course there is. Uh, and so the point is our risk is fairly high. And usually because of that, the frequency of deployment is usually measured in weeks, um, sometimes months. <laughs> uh, and the problem is that the longer we wait in deployment, the more features that are added that may not have been tested well together. And so uh, these generally have mm, sometimes somewhat the lowest levels of deployability. As we move up the chain, and notice a modular monolith has a little bit higher levels. Now it's still a monolith, but as a modular monolith, this is domain partitioned, which means instead of layers, and we have major components that encompass all of that domain, such as maybe shipping or customer or order or tracking, and then all the corresponding code within it. So it's really not delineated as layers as with a technically partitioned architecture like the layered architecture, but more domain partitioned. Because of that, um, we have a little bit less risk of deployment. Uh, we still have a lot of ceremony and uh, the frequency I'm sorry, yeah, and the frequency usually aren't changed much. Um, deployments every week or every two weeks, but I gave it a little bit of a boost off that bottom line just because there's a little bit less risk of deployment here because most of the changes are consolidated within one area, not spread across the entire architecture as with layered. Now, our significant leap happens when we move up to service-based architectures, where it's a hybrid of microservices where we really have separately deployed services, but these are called domain services. They're still separately deployed, but all the functionality, let's say, of customer and shipping and fulfillment and tracking are all contained within a coarse-grained domain service. And that we get a lot better, as you can see, deployability, because now, of course, uh, the risk of deployment is less because I'm only deploying a portion of the application, but it's not at the top level yet, like microservices, because they still incur risk that I could have broken something within that overall domain, such as shipping or customer. Um, however, the frequency of deployment is much better because now I've got a smaller deployment unit in that domain service, and consequently now, I can deploy a lot more frequently of each of those smaller domains. Um, and consequently, there's a lot less ceremony involved. However, the best for deployability in any architecture style happens to be microservices because here each service is defined as a single purpose, separately deployed unit of software that does one thing really well. And that's what we try to strive for in microservices. And consequently, if I need to make a change, for example, uh, to add an expiry date to wishlist items in our wishlist or movie list, 
uh, that change is in one single fine-grained service as opposed to even a domain or the entire application. Hence, I usually have daily to hot deploys in, within an hour. Um, the ceremony is a lot less because it's a smaller unit of software and correspondingly the risk on the overall application scope has dropped significantly. You know, when we go measuring deployability, there's things we capture and then measure. And here, um, what I can do is actually, which is usually manual, although if I can do a hook into something like Rally or Jira, um, all the better. But two things I capture. The first is kind of the feature or bug fix and how long did it take for deployment, both calendar and hours. And that measures the frequency. Um, but now I've got the risk of deployment. And so anytime I have a deployment error, um, I record that. And what I mean deployment error, either a failed deployment or a deployment that ended up breaking something else that was working previously. And then I can measure now the average deployment hours, again, hours or calendar for any features or bugs within a domain and the frequency. I can track these as well based on the number of failed deployments. And so I can actually measure all three of these dimensions of deployability. As a matter of fact, the frequency I can measure by saying, how many days before our, uh, we actually deploy? Now, this can be variable based on features and change, but the key point is I should start seeing a downward trend. If I'm not, uh, then really not getting that advantage of any sort of architectural refactorings on the deployment frequency. You know, the deployment effort, um, what I can do is say, how many hours did it actually take for that? And so rather than a calendar, a lot of times here I do use um, what was the overall effort to deploy? And notice here, we were doing well, and all of a sudden we're not. And so each deployment is starting to take longer. And this is a telltale sign that something is going awry. Either I've got too many dependencies between services, my services are getting more coarse-grained, or they're doing too much. And as a matter of fact, the point here is that it's getting harder to deploy software. And so this is a good warning sign um, in measuring this. As a matter of fact, um, what I like to do on the errors is take the number of failed deployments divided by the number of deployments that we have, and then multiply that by 100 to actually get a cumulative percentage. And as you'll notice in this graph, things are starting to get worse. In other words, notice here the upward trend. So for more information, um, certainly we talk a lot about these architectural characteristics in our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, that I wrote with Neil Ford in uh, released February of 2020. And we also devote a chapter for each of those architecture styles, plus more, <laughs> uh, that I mentioned in this lesson. So it's a great source to go to. Also, uh, don't forget Software Architecture Monday is a great source for free architecture lessons. And these are anywhere from uh, about eight to 10 minute videos. Some of them go a little bit over, but um, or I try to shoot for 10 minutes. Uh, and every other Monday. And so um, please take advantage of this. It is absolutely free. And also I do have live virtual training that I do, which you can get to on the training link in the menu. As a matter of fact, you can go straight to uh, the virtual training schedule as well, which I've displayed here to see. Um, usually I, I gather these in two month increments, but you can see the details of the class as well as click on the date to be able to register on wherever I'm actually hosting the live training on. This is really wonderful training folks with um, high interaction and it's a great training platform. And as a matter of fact, um, you can also look at upcoming, upcoming events uh, that I'm at, which also links in with the training schedule here. So. Anyways, this has been Lesson 84, Defining Deployability. Uh, again, my name is Mark Richards. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and stay tuned in two more Mondays for another lesson in software architecture where we'll continue our journey of architecture styles, specifically looking at scalability and elasticity with regards to all sorts of really cool architecture styles, including space-based architecture. Thank you so much for listening, and stay safe, everyone. Goodbye.